My name is Janice Rigney. I'd like to acknowledge the uh, Ghana people whose land we uh, sit on today and respect elders, past and present and future. I've learnt weaving from when I was a little girl with my grandmother, with the reeds, rushes as a lot of people call them. I was probably still going to school when we used to go picking the reeds around the swamp lands down the southeast. Uh, now what I'll do is I'll show you a bit of the weaving that I have learnt. This is what I'd done many years ago, over maybe about 40 years old. And uh, I still use it today to, to demonstrate at schools when, and community events that we do. Uh, we will, I will show you how we start them off. Now over here are some of the reeds that you can, um, that are the type of reeds that you use for your basket weaving. Uh, mainly they go around the wetlands, but uh, we do have, um, where some people grow them in their own backyards. And once you pick them, there's X amount of weeks that they dry. I think it could be six, five, six, seven weeks of letting them dry. And once they're dry, they're still green, but um, if you have a workshop after that X amount of time that they've been we uh, drying, you, um, I usually put mine in a bathtub to wet, but I, and I usually leave them overnight, but I think as long as they're damp and moist that you can, they're flexible. And um, this is the end result here of uh, what you're using with the reeds. Uh, this is the end result. Um, you can use it with the raffia as well, which I've in, included um, stitching around using the reed as a filling and then stitching with raffia. But um, this, is a, this one here is a reed that I've just shown you of what uh, you pick and let, uh, that's the process of, um, of picking the reeds to do your weaving with. I'd like to introduce my little helper today. Uh, she can introduce herself. Thank you so much, Aunty Janice. Yes, I'm Master Wanganeen. Uh, you might have seen me before around the community, and I'm going to be learning how to weave by the expert, Aunty Janice Rigney. What I'm going to do is I'll show you the process. When you pick the reeds, you uh, soak them overnight, or a few, I usually soak them overnight. Uh, maybe till they're um, dampened and flexible uh, and then you wrap them in a damp towel so that when you go to use them they're flexible without snapping. I'm going to find a few of them are going to be be a little bit that way but I'll unwrap them. Asta's going to select six thicker ones if you can Asta. Mm -hmm. Yeah okay but yeah so let's go here oh this is how we this is how we do it Asta. Like that put it a little bit like that. Mm -hmm. Now we got wrap it around then we feed it into like so pull it tight and pull it tight beautiful like that yeah then down this way yep. pull it around again push it through make sure it goes underneath whoops there's your stitch happening awesome yes like riding a bike. Yes. So just put it, pull it gently, Asta. Yeah. A little bit tighter, so okay. it's firmer. Okay. But there, there you go. Yeah. See. Okay. Did you learn anything as far as artwork when you was a little girl? Um. Yeah. I, I guess when we moved here from Kangaroo Island, I had my first Aboriginal teacher. That's right. Yep, was that's right. Uncle. Ray Clinch and oh yes 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 uh, uh, Auntie Nellie Egan oh Auntie Nellie yeah at O'Sullivan's Beach Primary yes. School how long do you think people have been weaving Aboriginal people oh my been? goodness uh, I think probably early 1900s maybe late 1800s oh, that's a um, long time. I know it's a long long time I got talking to one of the um, ladies that went to school but she was younger, a younger student, her family still live in Kingston and um, we got talking about weaving, you know, as you do, just chatting of what you've done with yourself over the years and she said, oh my mum's got a basket that was woven 
It's over 100 years old with the oh, reeds, wow. with this. I said, oh. I said, before we come back to Adelaide, can I come around and have a look at it? And they said, yes. She, and she didn't. We went around and said, and I, oh, I've got photos of it. Uh, it's one that my grandmother done. Wow. I haven't got it on me uh, to show you, but I'll show you it's on Facebook, on my uh, iPad, with yeah. all the photos. Uh, and, and I believe there's another one in Kingston too. I, and I said to my daughter, oh, I'd love to get Mum, she said, Don't, you can't be cheeky enough to ask people for it. I said, I'd be willing to offer yeah. something for it. I said, because it was done by my grandmother. Yeah, that's very I, special. And I believe the lady that's got the other one, you know what they use it for? Just to use to put socks in. Oh. <laughs> so I'm a little bit, you know, I'm thinking, oh, no. But yes, I, let's go now, Asta, and we'll see if we can turn it. Try and put it in a, 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 each a, a stitch long side. You need to open probably this up a bit. Yeah. But yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. and then I, I tend to tighten it up, but not too much. Okay? Oh, there you are. So, you. there you go, again. So How what do you, do you think um, the main use for the weaving baskets were. Well back in the day, years mm -hmm. ago, I think they used it for mainly for carrying food. Uh, they even used them for carrying babies, I believe. Um, of course you couldn't carry the water, maybe, and uh, fish nets. Mm. That was another thing they used it for, for uh, catching fish. Yeah, but uh, nowadays we do it just to um, give them away. Or, or people buy them off us to um, to acknowledge our um, our um, culture that we do, and uh, I know I love it just to uh, hang one when I've done one. I'm doing one in raffia, which I'm going to put on the wall. Thank you so much, Annie Janice, for that tutorial on basket weaving. Thank you, everybody in the community, for your continued support. Hope you all have a deadly reconciliation week. <laughs>